Hand, but nature strip, he's a force of nature today. Can he do it? Chautauqua, he's flying. Yeah. But Kevin Tari hit the front celebrity. But this is a blitz. It's a weak blitz. Have a go, you mug. Hey there, mugs. Back for another great episode of Make Queensland Racing. Great again. The Moors here with Lloydie and Bean, the two faces that are meant for TV, <laughs> mate. So I'm glad that we're back out of lockdown. And uh, Lloydie, mate, got a haircut for the big day back on TV too. How's yeah, it man. going? Home job, so. Um, cool. we'll, uh, it actually yeah. looks pretty good. It's not too bad. <laughs> don't, don't tell Kate that, but look. Well, you can't see the back of his yeah, head, no. can you? Oh, no. But no, it's look, good to be back. Uh, the internet was a bit slow last week, so that's nice to be uh, back live. Yeah, it's every time I watch uh, back our little Zoom efforts, I mean, it works fine when you're doing it on Zoom, yeah. and then you listen to it and it's just scratchy, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're about, Monks. We're about quality, and that brings me to Bean. Mate, look at him. <laughs> look at him. Mate, that's, that's all I bring pretty much, mate. Looking, looking forward to another classic week uh, back at Eagle Farm, my favourite surface in the country, because you, oh. ne you never know what's going to happen. Mm. The fields are actually not too bad, though, considering, because um, there's been talk lately about them, the trainers not wanting to go there, so... Yeah, it's still, still, still not on those, so well, there we go. That's right. It's uh, just another glorious week in Queensland racing, which we'll have a little bit of a chat about later, but, boy, it's been a big week. We had a massive, uh, massive tipping comp, so our big fella, Dion, was the winner, yeah. and he's going to be our mug of the week, so stay tuned, their mugs, to listen to his hot tip. Um, but Sportsbet came to the party, delivered some big goods, yep. had over 200 people enter. Yep. Um, I started well, and then it, I then it say, got worse. I think, uh, <laughs> I think actually Bean carried the flag for the mugs yeah. uh, in the comp, and that sort of sums it up, yeah. really, doesn't it? So, <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah, but it was good fun. So we might look at, well, next week is Group 1 Racing back. Yeah. Wing Stakes, I believe. So this week you got the Group 2, um, some stupid idiot uh, Victorian race that we don't really care about, but... Yep. Next week, we might do something similar for the return of Group 1 racing, because then it's it's spring. Yeah, yeah bloody football. It all starts up again, so, doesn't it? Back to back to back. Yeah, look, uh, look we like Doombin, let's be honest. Found some winners last week, which is handy. Um, we'll start with race one, and, and Schnitzel just let everybody, <laughs> and he's, uh, I think every, every man, his dog, is multi, and... yeah. Down, um, yeah, that was that was my that was one of my launch bets of the weekend, and that was not the not the got around the corner, and then um I don't know if he mm. saw some grass or something or what happened there, but just basically stopped there. It and just stopped, and then just went straight past him. So yeah, yeah it was... uh, well look, we were able to get it back. London Banker was a big win. We'll uh, you can see the replay there going right now. There, mugs Tremonto Bean, happy yeah. days. That's good, win, that. good return. Yeah, I, it real could good be. Return. I think, uh, Lordy, you pointed out some comments of where that horse might be trying to end up this prep. I think it's headed towards the uh, Golden Eagle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, the next plan is the Silver Eagle in Sydney, so obviously they probably have to win that or run, a, run well to get a start in the Golden Eagle, but that's uh, the end of that. Well, it's ambitious, was. but it was a good return. Yeah. So. And I think it's one of those, I think it's an ex Aquas horse that uh, mm. they picked up, I think, maybe 30k. Yep. It was a number at the top of my head, so... Look, that's the beauty. We, we even had that same luck with uh, tried horses, but yeah. it's coming. <laughs> if anyone wants to buy a horse, check uh, the English sales this week. Yep. We might have some news for you there as well. She Can Sing was awesome. Um, Costa's just doing it all. Fever Tire as well, mate. Lloydie, you've got two from two with your flying. little interview, so yeah. you're, you're flying. So uh, shooting for gold, but I think the one that we want to have a little bit of uh, time to savour was... At with 10, mate. Yeah, in the get out stakes, Lloyd. He's, like he's like a chef of your cat. <laughs> oh, just, just look at him, mate. He's just the marvel. Just how did that, yeah. that feel? Yeah, 15? Yeah, it was, um, felt good. The, the, account, the account didn't feel as good as what it probably should have <laughs> afterwards. But anyway, a win's a win. Um, another yeah, gun ride, Brad Stewart. Just got every um, all the favours, and yeah, too good again. Yeah. Mate, hundred percent, and uh, we were talking off air. Next start, well, what I think it'll be going for four in a sh four in a row. It'll pop up at a dollar eighty, and we'll absolutely truckload it and run the best second you'll ever see. So that's mugs punning there, mugs. That's why we tune in. And uh, <laughs> if you do subscribe to all our thing over jigos, you know the drill. But we need to get stuck in, boys, because yeah. back to the farm. This is where we've got to. Really we've hone lift. in. We've got to lift. <laughs> we we've do got to, need to lift. We've got to hone in. Um, I don't even. Oh yeah, no, I do have a selection for race one. That's handy. Yeah. But thanks to our great friends there at Sportsbet, giving us some juicy odds of two dollars eighty for Secret Tales. So this horse was uh, 
second up, I believe it won by about 20 lengths or something close down at the GC on a heavy 45. It opens here at $2.80 a favorite. Glorious Ruby there, 350 for inform jockey of the moment. Our favorite, Leah Kilner. She's absolutely flying. Mate, she's a killer. She's, she's a stone cold killer at the moment. <laughs> uh, and I guess the only other one that they're really looking at the moment there, uh, she's Heavenly from the Sears team out there at T-Bar. But yep. T-Bar form coming into Brisbane's a different story. Yep. But Lloydie, Secret Tales, I reckon there's a bit of spruik there. What can you tell us about the O'Day runner? Yeah, mate, look, I think the market's got it right. We're down to a race in two. Um, the favourite Secret Tales caught up with Matt Hoisted. They've got the one runner at Eagle Farm on Saturday. Hopefully an early kill for them. Have a listen to what Matty had to say about uh, his filly in the first. You've only got the one runner on Saturday with Secret Tales. Yeah, mate, yeah, she's the only one in town. She, um, obviously, 18-length winner two starts ago and then won nicely at uh, that Eagle Farm that she got the win at. Or, um, yeah. 1,000 metres first up, probably short of her best, you'd have to think, or...? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well and truly, mate. That's obviously the main, the main concern. Obviously, she's never run over, ran over. Um, you know, first start was over twelve hundred, then her next two were at fourteen hundred. So that's that's the main sort of worry. Uh, but she's definitely come back a lot more switched on. She's a lot more sharp at this time in more than probably just from sort of knowing what it's all about now. Um, but yeah, it would still still be a heavy, heavy worry um, whether they're a bit too sharp, especially with a couple of quick horses in the race as well. Um, but look, as long as she's she's um, doing her best work late, mate, it's a good lead into another three-year-old played in in a couple of weeks' time over 1,200, and you now she'll only improve once she gets the gets up in trip. That's it. Has she? Have you got much of a plan uh, with her, mate? Like where you go long term? Is she a Magic Millions filly or? Yeah, she is, but with nothing really set in stone. Look, we're not obviously she's. You know, it's hard. She won by one by adding links, but. You know, she beat nothing that day. You yeah. know, they were they were virtually you know, from the six hundred. Uh, there was only what was there only five in the race or something like that, and you know, three of them just stopped dead from the virtually from the six hundred. And that other thing, the thing that um, you know led up that she sat off like it virtually stopped at the top of the turn too. So it was definitely made look a bit more impressive through the you know lack of competition. But at least she backed that up at Eagle Farm, and again. Off season, you know, it's not like she beat that much, but um, you know, there's no no grand sort of plans. You know, we'll just let her come through, try find some nice cutest races, pick up some good money. This prep, and if she keeps putting her hand up, then we can sort of you know look for look for some of them races come come sort of summer carnival time. Beauty, uh, barrier three, Steph Thornton on. Much of a plan on Saturday, probably like you say. There's a bit of speed there. I've got about four or five different leaders on my speed map. You just hope that you can sort of keep up with them, I guess, early and tack on. Yeah, pretty much. Look from that gate, she'll be back in the second half of the field. It's just a matter. Of hopefully, we're not having to chase her along, and she can have a chance to actually travel and um, you know, give her a chance to to finish off. Probably just the main the main sort of tick, I guess, too, is just that she's. You know, we know that. Eagle Farm's definitely a horses for courses sort of track, and the fact that she's got the win on the board, at least that's a you know that's a big tick in her favour. So we know she we know she handles the track. So um, but yeah, as long as she can hopefully hold a position and be you know have a chance to travel, that's going to give her a chance to finish off. And you know, there's no no question she'll be finishing home strongly. It's just whether yeah they're just a little bit too sharp for her over the thousand. Once again, you just bring the class to this show. That was amazing. Can you make it three from three? And are you backing yourself in here? That's the question. Mate, well, it's going to be a win-win situation, I think, from uh, me out here. Either we get three from three on the interviews or the um, I back the winner. And I thought Glorious Ruby for Brian Day and Leah Kilner, um, just at the 1,000 metres, like like Matt said, the, the 1,000 first up for Secret Tales, probably a bit of a query. You'd probably rather see it at twelve and 1,400 deeper into the prep. I think Glorious Ruby is the one that's got the speed over the thousand. First up with a three kilo claim, just to run them into the ground. She, you know, second uh, there to I think it was Sweet Dolly, um, yeah. and a couple of wins early on in the campaign. I think yeah. she's the the one to beat in the first. Mate, I'm I'm going outside the top two in the market. I've yeah, um, right, eh? I've headed for She's Heavenly for the Sears yard. I um I got a bit of respect for them when they bring one to town. I think and um, She's Heavenly um, two from two, um, so it's done everything right so far. Draws the inside as well, and we know how the Sears runners like to 
wrap around a corner. Um, the rail's only out five, so I mean, it's a bit of a bonus, I guess, if you're basing. I mean, I'd prefer it sort of about probably 15 or 20 if it could be, but um, <laughs> happy to um, happy to take five meters. And we get Georgie Cart right and carrying 54 and a half kilos. I just think at the odds, I'm happy to be there with the query on Secret Tales of the Distance. And um, I've had a couple of jabs at Glorious Ruben. I think they were the two seconds, so um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, I need to see it win first, <laughs> mate. Well, I'm, I'm jabbing with Lloydie on this one here, just yes. just to form one last prep. I mean. <clears throat> Secret Tales and Cheese Heavenly, I guess they're in the same boat that they just, on paper, they look like they're going to be competitive, but yeah. until they meet a field like this yeah. and either put them away or fail miserably, yeah. um, that's where you can get a bit of a read on what happens next with these couple of horses. Yeah. So, mate, great insight again. Good luck to the O'Day team. I know they're big fans of the show. Yeah. If we get a hat, we'll put it on the old hat rack out here. But uh, <laughs> race two there, boys. We're over the thousand, so... Come after race one, we can hopefully use that track pattern to sort of see where the winners are coming from, which is absolutely useless insight right here, right now. Um, but we've got Saka, which has Mystic Aroma form lines, which is pretty exciting. But again, you've got a, a nice list of three-year-olds, newly turned, Colts and Geldings, bit of cutest grit, cash up for grabs. Uh, the Bean Dog, you're always in a bit of a legal spirit or legal drama. Yeah, mate, sure. Top am, two in the sure market am. there at three bucks. Sacra and Legal Esprit. What can you tell us, mate? I mate? actually um, there's a, there's a fair bit of pace in this. I thought it was an interesting race. We got Legal Esprit, Gamelian Bot. They'll both go forward. Um, I'm, however, I'm with um from the Ross Stable. Chris Caserta's on board. Big Chrissy up from Melbourne. He's been up here for a while, I think. Yeah, he's, sort of rides he's all based over. himself he's got, for the, all over the, the GC. He's doing quite well. Yeah. This was come out a bit Frosty Mango, who was absolutely launched in the market for the TJ Golden Yard down mm. the coast. I think a, a friend of the mugs, I believe, um, <laughs> Mister Mister B Christopher, perhaps had a bit of a um, bit of a launch bet that day and came up just a bit short. And yeah. I, um, him and I know, both, and you both, and yeah, everyone but, else both. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, I think the shiny sniper can make it two from two here. I'm happy to play the each way odds with the with the speed on. It'll be sitting out the back, but gets the big long straight at Eagle Farm. And if they do have they are running on at all. I think. Um, I think the price have to be with it. Yeah, mate. I'm. I'm with the favourite here in Saka. I thought. Uh, you know, probably finished sixth in that race that we that Mystic Aroma around the, the Sunshine Coast behind uh, Miss Hipstar and those couple, which are pretty handy horses, and then went to Ipswich and you know was a certainly beat really. Dayrani beat it. Yeah. Um, and then copped a four horse field at the Sunny Coast uh, last Sunday, and you know dollar forty or so, and just led all the way and. Uh, one comfortably, Jimmy Orman stays on board, and I think he's the sort of horse from from Barrier Seven. You know, like last start took bad luck out of the equation, but I don't think it has to lead. I think it can be sort of even two or three pairs back on the outside from the outside alley. Yeah. Um, and I just think he's the horse that uh, probably is the best of this lot. Yeah, well, round out your trifecta there with uh, a little bit of legals there, monks. So legal is free for me. Um, I just think it's, you're right, it's that Miss Hipster sort of form that we're talking about with Saka or Glorious Ruby last prep, and that's sort of the form that I'm leaning towards. At the moment, I could be easily be made to eat my words, which happens quite a bit, but that's all right. Um, but just has the apprentice claim there on Gemmel and Bolt as well to sort of bring it back down. I just think it's had two easy kills at T-Bar. You know, that's nothing to be spruiking about, but just with the, the fitness on its side there... Um, Look, it's only been beaten once by Glorious Ruby, who we're tipping in the first, Lloydie and I at least, yep. um, which shows it's a pretty handy horse full stop. So yeah. could be a yeah, bit of an exciting day for uh, for Start race two fans, I reckon. Yeah. No yeah. kicking off with a no <laughs> not kicking off with um with Moses must have early in the piece yet, mate. Or no, yeah. maybe, <laughs> mate, you know. Well that. <laughs> that's it. Um credibility wise, I mean sports bet helps bring us to the party here, but for those mods fans, you've you've just been able to launch into two dollar eighty shots that have, <laughs> have got the job done. So hey, you know the mail is hot when the mail is hot. So we're gonna keep the good vibes rolling there, mugs. Uh well we get to the end of the show there. Race three, fifteen hundred meters, the Mount Franklin class three handicap. Uh so horses that have won two, three or less races. Um Sophia. Now speaking of best bets, Lloydy, got a bit of a history with this horse and making it your best bet, but if you look at its uh, its form is prep, it's just thereabouts. You'd rather see the ones than the fours in the form guide, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, and I mean, you're getting yeah. four bucks. Two speaking of fours, so that's right. It um, 
I mean, it won first up. Can't do much more than a two and a half length win at Eagle Farm. Uh, so no, it's got that you, eagle. You can win second up. That's what you can well, do more. Yeah, than when, you're on a, up. when you're on a six is Yeah. It, I mean, that, that race last night at Doom and got beat 0.4 of a length in the open, three year old company. Um, Magic Conqueror won that. Xenifer came second, and Xenifer came out and smashed them um, last start. Yeah. Uh, drops back to Class 3 company and gets back to Eagle Farm, which uh, she's already got that box ticked. I'm happy to be on at the four bucks from Barrier 3, where she just gets every chance. Anything but a fave, Lodi, for the next? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but Zoe, of, <laughs> Actually, no, mate, no. <laughs> bloody, Speaking you're of, doing um, stable bosses tips this week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mate, to be honest, I did the form before prices were out, so... Oh, so he's a student of the game. Yeah, that's right. is. Speaking of um, going, not not too wide here. Um, I'm actually on um, Killer Kilner here with Mashiki for the Heathcote stable. Killer Kilner, um, did I hear that right? Yep, mate. Last she's, year um, it was killed on my bets, Kilner. That's yeah, no, it she's shifted the tide here and uh, mate, flying this stable at the moment. Um, it was a pretty good first up run behind Next Dimension. Was storming home down the outside of Doombin, which they don't often sort of make ground. Um, it's got a really good record at the track. Barrier 4, I think, will be closer in run. It sort of came around, and I think it was running second last in the run. Last start at Doombin. Gets the claimer, so be carrying absolute air, and I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat. The Heathcote Yard is... He's flying, isn't he? He made a few comments during the week, too, which could, could point to why he's flying, but anyway, we'll get well, to we that. Might, uh, well, the run sheet, we might just segue into that oh, in yeah. a second there, but uh, no, you're right. Well, she's, she's been flying for Heathcote, too. I yeah. think the deal uh, was a, a two-week loan. Uh, from her, whoever her bloody boss is. I don't know how it works, but anyway. Yeah. But she's done all she can, winning races and, and three also, months now. Three months, yeah, yeah there you go. It's been extended. extended. Yeah. So, um, oh, I mean, it makes a bit of a difference when you're riding for a top stable and yeah. the horse quality might be just that cut above. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm steering away from Killer Kil- Kilner there for you, mate. Mashani Epic on top for Mozza. Barrier one. We know these Mashani's just like to fly out of the gate, so I'm hoping it can do that here. Thirteen dollars each way all day, thanks to Sportsbet. But uh, look, last two starts have been at Eagle Farm. Hasn't been too bad. The good stat that I like is it's two from two third up, both at Eagle Farm. Um, and last start was in a length of that race where Boom Spender shocked the world. Uh, you had Jetty come out and run pretty well since. Super gorgeous there midweek, probably should have won. I'm um, looking at Lloydie because I know he was pretty confident. Um, but that was the Bundy and Coke race, same story that day. Yeah. So it's not a bad Saturday form one. <laughs> just the jazz. Yeah, <laughs> just, just getting <laughs> left, right, good night. God, yep. um, <laughs> boom. I don't, I don't think I've got anything else to add there. Um, no, but yeah, a bit of value. So yes. 13 each way. It looks this, oh, well, when you got Sophia at $4 favourite. Yeah. I mean, yeah. geez. You're happy to be with the 13. Living, so living breathing. Oh, man. living breathing. Well, look, we'll move on. Uh, and what you touched on there, Bean, Big Bobby Heathcote. Now, look, I just wanted to uh, ask a bit of opinion from you two and give my little bit of two cents on it. Because what what's great, and this is the, uh, the great idea, the great world of LinkedIn these days, as a matter of fact, because every time... I'll put a little bit of a Heathcote share post about, you know, Curic and blah, 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 blah. You get a few people from the uh, RQ land and BRC land sort of, you know, oh, you don't know how it works. You know, we've got nothing to do with any of this, blah, 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 blah. But you do. You do. What were were his specific comments? What did he say again? So it's more about, well, his quote was, it's almost harder to get caught cheating than it's then it is getting away with cheating and winning. Something along those lines. Yeah. So, but he's been blown up for two years about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty outspoken about it. I... it the thing would be, if Chris Waller was doing this in New South Wales, yeah. what do you think the reaction from Mr. Jesus Valandis would be? It'd be a statement to nip it in the bud, protect the integrity of the sport. Yeah, because it just shoots. That's the problem. It's the, yep. the whole integrity of the sport is just a query. Mm. And yep. as, soon as, it, as soon as it came out, it made me think it was like, you know, is there any point Here in we go continuing the punting kind of thing? Because if it's just a complete stitch up and you've got people jabbing and using this, I mean, we saw it up in Darren Weir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a thousand stories there like about all sorts of things they were doing. I just think, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to just be completely well, cleaned up and, and sorted. The, like, and the issue is, story. and I understand... Or let them all do it. I understand when they when they get now in box and rah, you boys don't fucking know a thing, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. But 
Yeah, true to a degree that QR and BRC have nothing to do with Curic and what they do with this drug testing thing. Yes. But it's like saying, you drive a Ford, if your steering wheel was made by Hyundai and they've got a 50% fail rate when you have a crash for your airbag being released, yeah. you're still gonna go to Ford and go, is this car safe for me? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it is, but this little thing that don't worry about it too much, but yeah. we don't wanna take any blame for it at the same time. So I don't understand why they can't come out with a statement to say, regard, well, not even referring to Heathcote, but just saying, hey, the integrity of our sport is number yeah. one, we, we have a governing body, Curic, that, was that the, do this, this, and this to assure that punters yeah. are looked after. That they was the idea of the introduction of Curic anyway was so that Racing Queensland could focus on the racing and the, you know, the scheduling and all that sort of thing. And Curic, that, they have one job, and that is to, you know, they are the Queensland Racing Integrity Commission. So yeah. their one yeah. job is to police the integrity of the sport. And if, um, you know, if a predominant, a, you know, a prominent trainer in Queensland is coming out and saying that, yeah, you know, you, you're probably un unlucky to get pre-race swabbed. Um, yeah. yeah, there's something wrong there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and turnover funds. It's a, it's a big beast. problem. It's a big problem. <laughs> turnover funds a beast, and you, if you go through like the tab reports, Queensland Racing is like the last one yeah. that has turnover generated, yeah. and it's just because, well. I don't know who's cheating. I don't know who's not. Yeah, Even for us. People, yeah, people just avoid it all. Yeah, together. and that's what I think they, they missed at that point that, yeah, although it's got nothing to do with the race club or RQ, well, yeah. it's still, they're the ones that, hey, everyone thinks that they run the show. Well, why does this go on? You can't just ignore yeah, it. It's not, yeah, you can't. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what they've done the last two years and that's fucking worked well, hasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, well, there we go. I'm glad we're on the same page. Just... Yeah. Just address it, you know, it's not that hard. Even if Heathcote's wrong, then just prove it. Yeah. Say, look, this is the team. Follow them around with a the camera. Yeah. This is what they do, race day, race day. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. people can be their own judge. Yeah. We get on a race four then, hey? And what's yeah. Heathcote got in this one? That might just be the launch time. Oh, he does got one. Well, the thing is, this is almost the step back for the Chris Waller handicaps. And uh, we've got one. We've got Matau in which we identified a couple of weeks ago as a bit of a mug booker, yes. probably out of its depth last start. And I think we uh, I think Bean got sucked in. So, yes, did, no, Bean, you're getting five bucks this week for Matawi against a Prophet, who is one of those horses that will yeah. probably make a mug book appearance at some point throughout this prep. Yeah. Are you going back to the well for Walla? Nah, I've, I've sided with Prophet here. Um, I mean, it's a pretty ordinary race. To begin with, to be honest, like yeah. it's just it's just a pack of non-winners. I try. I I did go through the form and actually almost try and make a case for Plit V say or Plit V or you say that stupid name source. Um, you can't. It, but I yeah, I just have to land on profit here. I can't. Matawi was just too bad last start. I know it was maybe out of its depth, but it was just ordinary. It was ordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was real ordinary. It'll probably come out in the middle of the weekend. I've said that, but yeah, profit for me. It was just a super run. But it ran in behind. It was Emerald Kingdom. yeah, Emerald Kingdom and Scalapini. Yeah, and there's a few finished after that. But I think I've referenced yeah. in later races. So happy to be with it. Couldn't agree more, mate. Um, profit, you know, beaten three lengths at Wait for Age, which just wasn't his go. Uh, I think that was second up. Might have been Stradbroke Day that that one. Um, you know, first up was Super at Eagle Farm. Next are uh, two and a half wing, uh, three wings in the glass house got beaten by and then two and a half behind Emerald Kingdom. Yeah. Goes up half a kilo. Beat pretty much a fair few, a fair chunk of this field last start. Um, and yeah, it's just drawn well, handles Eagle Farm. If it doesn't win, I think that'll be the end of my punting days <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Jeez. All right, well, I'm, I'm, glad wow. I could, I'm glad I could probably contribute to that because I'm sticking with the mug book. Got my towel on top. Oh. I, don't, I don't. I don't think you two really want to hear much more. No, I really don't uh, about it. But um, Dipman just goes back on board. That's going to be a positive. You know, he he didn't ride last start. Where I think Emerald Kingdom though just blew every horse's game plan out. That that meant. Yeah. I mean, it was a great ride, great win. It's yeah. probably the one that we thought. Well, this horse is dropping back from the Stradbroke in a bloody hindsight should have been just yeah. a launch. There. Should have been. Yep. <laughs> we just get too fancy on this show, yeah, don't we? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, these jackets get to your head. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna give it one more chance. Right, yeah. Bold run, or we uh, we make a little edit in the mug book <laughs> next yeah. week. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll watch this space. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on, lads. Race five. It's getting better. 
Because if you didn't get, uh, mate, I've got to try to sound optimistic for the mugs out there listening. Let's just move straight past this one. They've got to listen to us for 40 minutes. We might as well sound excited. Yep. Uh, But yeah, I don't know. Maybe this will perk your interest, Lloydy. Benchmark 78, 2400 metres. Uh, I wouldn't even know where the start is at Eagle Farm for the 2400 metres, let alone I think half these horses don't know where the finish line is for the 2400 metres. Black Log's still going around. So. Mate, <laughs> mate, mate any, any race where Black Log's starting at $6 is a problem for punters, mate. This is dead set. This is just warp speed, launch. London Bank of Form came out in Belgium yep. last start. If, you, if either of you had any other comments other than warp speed, you need to leave the show right now because that's a disgrace, basically. There's, it's not even worth mentioning any other any other one in this race. So moving on. No comments from me. Yep. My, um, my only notes for this race is, do I have to tip one? <laughs> <laughs> and for argument's sake, warp speed is the tip. <laughs> but yeah, again. It's uh, just... Yeah. And if anything else wins, if, if Profit wins and it gets to this race and warp speed doesn't win, then that's, that is the end. What it is, is it's a sad, it's a sad indictment to the um, distance racing Queensland says a lot. We, yeah. do, we do lack massively anything yeah. over sort of the mile and a bit I mean apart from sort of London Banker it's I mean but, but that's only 2400 sort of well, plus it's, 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 he's going around winning this by 14 yeah, yeah. but you're, you're right like I remember years ago they had a whole track refurbishment at, at Rocky and the cup used to be 2000 metres and when they redid the track it was either okay the cup can move to 2200 metres or back to a mile and all the trainers said, oh, we don't have the horse to win a 2,200 metre cup. So yeah. our cup's a 1,600 metre yeah. race. You and know. you get a 2,400 metre race. every Almost every mid yeah. race down in Melbourne, just pretty much. The, they just the run the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, but even still, like you look at the, the hacks going around, let's call them that. 42,000 for the winner. So if yeah. you've got one that's just... Battling along, it runs like it's, a trip it's a pretty decent little yeah, bad. It's a decent warp. payoff. Yeah. yeah, just have warp speed go around. I mean, warp speed was probably going to the paddock, and they're like, ah, oh, forget it. Let's just win forty k before we do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, toilet break there before the quaddy. Um, race six, mate. We'll get we'll spark the interest back up because yeah. then uh, we, we know there's energy. <laughs> we know there's uh, there's certainly some energy upcoming here in the show, but yeah. uh, well, look, I think Lady Banff. I would honestly just see rather see her line up in race five with the rest of those hacks because mm-hmm. she's coming an absolute torturous one to uh to watch every week but yeah. go to me in your favorite at five bucks big bad bustling oh, bailey on board scary, um 1200 look in her defense with form she seems to do her best running at eagle farm hasn't missed a place from three attempts hasn't got a win in those three attempts either though yeah. so i'll be clear there but then you have dusty tycoon um, his second favourite Scottish Mist who did a bit of track work with Rothfire yep. I don't know if that means a thing or not but I don't know mm. look into it as you will Jet Ski Big Brad Bruce they go through the same form line um, who were they behind actually it was Luskin Hero who uh, that was another race Lloydie mate I've just pretty much read out names and numbers can you decipher this at all oh Genzo the Wolf oh, I like that <laughs> yeah Value. 100%. Yeah. Took, took me six races to get to a bit of did you just, value. But... Did you just tip it purely so you could do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a reason. That's I've got a reason. Nice. Loves Eagle Farm. Uh, Maddie Wishart takes three kilos off. He's, you know, two starts at the track and distance and she win in a big second. Day, she could Yeah, she, she's running well too. Um, last prep beat Dr. Why Not and Superium. I think Superium came out and brained them on maybe Australia Day again or the yeah. week after. Um, and then it's t- two runs, you know, first up it won on in May and then it's had two runs since, both placings behind shooting for gold do uh, probably not be too bad or six points at the moment, so 11 bucks. Absolute launch. <laughs> I reckon it's almost really? the best. I reckon it's almost the best of the day. Jeez, to be I'm honest, at eleven dollars. Like in all honesty, like I, the form's just absurd. I just was like, looked through the field and I was like, how's again the wolf for eleven dollars? And that yeah. clown dusty tycoon that can't win four dollars. He's been whacked and la- lady bamp. I mean, it can't win. I mean, I know this thing's not not. A pr- it's not a. It's not a <laughs> prolific winner either. But second and third behind shooting for gold. <laughs> Load. Jeez, is yep. it too late to change my tip? <laughs> yeah. I want to get on board with you, lads. That's the confidence we need. Uh, like I've got Lady Banff. I'm just gonna, <laughs> yeah, look, it'll go on the quaddy for our monk's quaddy that we sent out. But um, moving on, uh, 
that might segue perfect because we've got the, the greatest segment in Mugs TV history. <laughs> Beans get in the seat. I'm talking wop, 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 that's some wet ass. Mate, I've got an absolute clap. This is probably my favourite getting to see I think I've ever done, to be honest. Um, Seven-year-old New Zealand gelding from the Barry Lockwood stable. Moz and I, and probably Lordy as well, have had many chats about this particular horse. It ran again. I think it was, if it wasn't yesterday, it was last week. It's anyway, it, um, it's had 31 starts for one win at the famous Bow Desert track. It's placed 59% of the time, and it's only won 80000 in prize money. It's impossible to back. Its average starting price is a dollar eighty, and the horse gentleman is coming spinner. It certainly is. Yeah. 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 It's got it's got better swimming ability than many dolphins out there. This thing is born for the sea. I cannot believe they're still running it. It just it, surely it's cost them hundreds of thousands just to keep it in work. I just it has just to in go the, in the sea. Probably is psych psychiatric. Bills that yeah, the, the owners yeah. have got. A, a, an average starting price of a dollar eighty. That's a few, a few that's, races. That's, I remember it went through a That's run unbelievable of, yeah, for one segments. for one win. Yeah, that's the that is the poster boy for beans getting the seat. Yeah. I think it went around about a dollar twenty that day. Bo does it yeah, too. Yeah, it, it so won you, well. So you could have got your money back. Bo does it. You could, <laughs> yeah. you could have got your money back, <laughs> but you had to. <laughs> But you had to sell 50 Bitcoin <laughs> to, be oh. able to, to be able to load the bet on. That's it, eh? Oh, yeah, it ran yeah. well. Oh, the Eagle Farm? Yeah. Bo does it. Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah all right. It's, uh, well, joins Blacklog and uh, Sir Barnabas in there. I think yeah. Sir Barnabas, oh, did it accept? No, I no, thought it was didn't. racing. Yeah, this Blacklog. This they must have heard you, mate. They yeah. must have heard you. <laughs> Blacklog goes in every week, mate. What are you surprised <laughs> about that? All right, race seven. Now we've got a uh, we've got an 1825 meters. That's a bit obscure, but anyway, BM 78s again. Handicap racing is Brisbane 101, isn't it? Yep. But two dollars eighty you get for Champagne Auntie. Uh, look, it's first up was super. I didn't really know what to make of the second up run. It got the job done, but that field wasn't, I guess, the strongest uh, form you could nah. say. But you know. Again, it's one of those fields that, you know, you got Magic Conqueror, had a win a couple starts back. Elo, uh, good last week in a week mid-class, mm. uh, mid-week field. Yeah. What can beat it? Mate, um, predictable miss, Ken. He came second to it last start and meets it two kilos better. Um, was rattling home behind Champagne Arnie at the mile and it, you know, it's, it's a winner at 1900 metres. Lee Kilner takes three kilos off. Uh, the killer Kilner. The killer Kilner. During the inside, which I was a little bit concerned about, I just would have preferred to see it um, you know, sprouting wings out wide. But who They'd knows? probably like to switch their barriers. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows what happens at Eagle Farm though. They probably come out in a straight line across the straight. Yeah. And every horse gets their chance. But yeah, I just thought meeting it a couple of kilos better and only has to make up 0.8 of the length can do the job at 14 bucks. Mate, I reckon um, I reckon ELO, I know it didn't beat much last start. Um, I think Champagne already, I, I do think it was hard to go past, but Barrier 11, I, I don't know, that. I don't really love that. Eagle Farm, it'll get its chance. Um, I just thought the ELO had a better turn of foot. It handles the Eagle Farm surface. That's a big push here because I think horses just either handle it or they simply don't. don't, don't. That's basically the rule of thumb. Um, I'm getting eight dollars. I think it'll be running past um, Champagne Auntie and, and hopefully hopefully predictable miss late in the piece. Yeah. Happy to be with. Nah, favourite on top boys. I think we've got some T bar magic in the air. Mm. Champagne Artie. Crack your champagne. Put it in the fridge now for about three oh three ten PM there on Saturday when the champagne does it. Uh, I just think the upside's there. I mean, predictable miss, mate. <laughs> I mean, look, it's ran seven, 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 ninth. Runs a blinder, you know. Champagne Ready to win. Ready to win. <laughs> Ready to win. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, race number eight, there, lads. Muggets out there watching. Yep. We got the big dogs back in town here. We got the Golan Yard, rocking Royal Hail, Peppy La Few. Now, this is a bit of a horse that uh, probably just found itself on the Wayward Spiral down. Um, was it Nom somewhere else, Lloydy? The next, the race nine of the thing. Oh, right. Yeah, so they... Is it still in there? No, it's scratched. So oh, it's, it's... breaking news here on yeah. the podcast, Mugs. Yeah. All right, well, it's your second favourite. Um, we bought a zoo. Let's just two, two, two. You know, let's sum that up. Uh, but the other goal and runner in this race, run for glory there at the eight bucks. Now, that's uh, had a little bit of money, and there's a horse that is the North Queensland favourite. 
Lloydy, let's, uh, I'll let you elaborate on who I'm talking about, but also tell us your tip there for race number eight. Yeah, mate, Brad, he's a, he's, he comes <laughs> down to uh, the big smoke. <laughs> what a name for a horse. Yeah, it's a river, isn't it? Like, <laughs> no, so I think we've had Ian, you know, when oh. uh, there's a few others, there's, yeah, there's a few good ones with those male names. Brad. Uh, but Brad, that's the epitome <laughs> of horse racing names. Yeah. He's, he, he's flying, though. He always is. He's just always there about. He's finished second in the Mackay New Market last start. Uh, 1300 probably just that touch too far for him. He drops yeah. back to the 1200 and Alex Pattis takes three kilos off. Uh, had the stable change from Trinity Bennon to Tim Cook. I think Trinity uh, didn't want to pee into the cup, so she's out yeah. for a couple of months. Something going on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I um, I'm I'm with him. I'm with Brad on top from Barry One. I think he just box seats and that weight weight claim. And it's the right time of year to bring him down here, but. I am cautious of um, Pepe Le Few because I did have him on top in the last race uh, before it was scratched. So probably uh, sort of race I played the exacter there. But Bean, are you are you with Brad? Are you? No, I'm with the um, I'm with the marvel that is Sea Raider, mate. Sea Raider is another one of those horses that um, it just loves Eagle Farm, mate. It's pet trip. It doesn't run fourteen hundred meters. I I yeah. don't really know what they were doing last start. To be honest, it's just yeah. a bridge too far. Um, it barely runs a poor race. You're always getting $10. It's, it's, the, at, it's yeah. the at wit's end of last season. It just keeps turning up at 10s or 15s, and you're just like, geez, why didn't I back that thing? I think in an open race, I mean, it'll try and lead from nine. Um, it has the ability to handle, like, a strong tempo. Like, it can have two or three outside it. Still kicks off the turn kind of thing. So I just have to be with it, the odds, I think. it's um, I think it's massive overs again. Yeah, Bean, I'm with you. I'm not missing out on the massive overs this yeah. week. Um, I think there's there's been a bit of cash for it already. So yeah, it looks like the mums know, man. It's not us, but somebody else knows. Um, love to see Brad run well. Just had a look through his form. It's first first time in town yeah. in Brisbane, so it's uh, it's sort of good to because we we rate the North Queensland form, but it's good to see when they come down here and like at least they're competitive yeah. Yeah. in this sort of grade. He's so. one that will be too, I think. You know, like he's just that. Just his racing style. Yeah, exactly. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be in it for a long way and if he doesn't win, he'll run a, a cracking second or third. I think. Yep, and uh, Mr. TJ, we just can't back Royal Hall in again. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So. Yeah, I can't. The jury's out there. <laughs> yeah. Now, Muggs, last week we introduced the mug of the week. We had Gabby on. She was great in the Congo. Um, geez, I tell you what, if, go watch that replay, Marks, because you're either on In the Congo or you're on Remark, and I don't, I think they would I had have a bet, I think I had a bet on both. I think I had In the Congo straight out, I had, and then I had Remark in a multi that would have got up if Remark had a one, and then they both ran, what, second, third? I was just like, yep. no. Oh, it was absolutely brutal. So, yeah. how it works here, Marks, we get 50 bucks, and we're going to put that up for charity. So, our charity at the moment is the National Jockeys Trust. So we're just going to keep going until we finally get one, make that donation, and yeah. then we'll choose another charity. Yeah. Because uh, it's not very fair if we miss out every week, is it? Right. But uh, thanks to Sportsbet for making this happen. But yep. uh, anyway, this week we've got our Sportsbet tipping comp winner, Dion. So he's on the line now, and I believe he's looking down Melbourne way for a winner. Listen up. Hey lads, hope you're doing well. Uh, best bet this Saturday comes in at Caulfield Race 8, number 2. We're going to go with Streets of Avalon, currently at $3. Uh, should take a lot of beating. Bit of a sticky draw at, from Barrier 8, but should just sit outside the lead, or if not lead. Um, really liked his first start run over the 1200. Uh, strips fit our second up, 1400. Ticks all the boxes, lads. Zach Spain has actually come out and said that. Uh, he peaked at the 150 meter mark in his last run, which just tells us that it should be eating up the 1400. So all the best mugs and happy punting. Group two fever down there in uh, in Melbourne with the PB Lawrence Stakes 1400. It's just just good to see some good horses come back too, isn't it? Yeah, whether or not Streets of Avalon is in the uh, good horse category, I'm, I'm, the jury's out. Yeah, but, but he's <laughs> but I mean, he is going well, the horse, and this is probably his race. Well, that's the thing. You look yeah. at like. He's that classic horse that the placement's been great because he's not quite at that, you know, under yeah. advantageous handicapping, probably get into a sneaky group one. But yeah. you got to have him rock hard fit to pick off these races whilst those better horses are coming back, need the run. Yeah. He just goes out in front, does what he wants to do. So yeah. best Paul, of luck. Caulfield's a track too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the worst my, track. My favourite track. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thank God we're not in uh, 
<laughs> Thank God we're not in <laughs> Melbourne. Full stop. <laughs> anyway, all right, we've got, we've got to drive back up. We need to get the hell out of Victoria. They, they hate us down there. <laughs> I don't know why, yep. uh, but we've got to get our stakes up here, and that's what we need. We need winners to finish off the day. Yep. A class six, thanks to someone's venue mode class six. Handicap conditions, of course. Dream Reach are your favourite. Solid last start there with a good gutsy win. $3.20 you're getting, uh, and that's the champagne auntie form that I'm touching on. Have a while, a bit of the T-bar factor all around there. Yep. Got your good friends, uh, Stuttering, Kubrick. Yep. Barney's Laws getting a little bit like that as well. Yeah. Bean, let's have the Beans launch in the last to save the day. Uh, Dream Reacher, I think, mate. I think um, I think it's uh, it's pretty close to best of the day. Um, beat home pretty smart, sharp. Champagne RT. Avawal was in that race as well. I think it ran fourth since come out and won. Um, stays the same trip. Drops to three kilos. Probably the best jock in Queensland on form at the moment in Jimmy Orman. Sticking, Premiership leading jockey um, at the moment. Mm. Yeah, what well, I mean, it's drawn wide, but it's got the big eagle farm surface. I don't think it. I mean, its speed map's complete crap because I think it can sit sort of four or five pairs back and just pick them off. To be honest, so I wouldn't worry too much about that on pace sort of jump you're seeing in the speed map situation. Um, and I think Avalol probably runs second. Jeremy yeah. on top, Cornella for me, bang. Lovely, mate. I um, like I said, I was keen on Pepe Lafuria. You know, let me run second to Fevertor last start. Uh, the Gold Coast, but obviously can't tip a horse if it's not running. Uh, so Fortunately not. I, I really didn't like the race, and I didn't like it so much so that I I think I'm going to end up with Kubrick on top, oh, just at the each way yeah. price. I, no. Just first up. And Come on, are you hand, serious? I am serious. Wow. Handel's Eagle Farm. Uh, been a long time between drinks. But, <laughs> You're going to be a long time between podcasts if you keep this up. <laughs> Are you getting sent a Chris Waller hat or something? Right. Is that what's I'm going on? I'm trying to, mate. I'm trying to. Oh, I don't think back in Kubrick's going to help. Uh, well, I shouldn't really give you stick because I've found stuttering on top. And I don't know how it has. Um, it has rain. Get mate. this right. Exactly. Informed jockey. Yep. That's what we love. We love you, Leah. Six starts at the track. For five thirds yep. at the track. Yeah, I, I mean, that. I don't need to tell you, Ben. Yeah, I, know I, I was on all. I think you were on uh, all five of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, but just think, it's an Eagle Farm horse. It's going to get a claim, and if they are sort of leading, barrier seven, it should be in that top three or four. Um, I can't really say much else, mate. We've yeah. we've done it time and time again with stuttering. So, a shame. Uh, there's been a bit of money for it though. I guess that's I don't know scratchings. A couple of scratchings, all, yeah. a few scratchings, mate. So, yeah. we'll move on because it's a bit of a horror finish. But if we can snake it, bang, that's what we're about. Yep. Best of the week here, mugs. Uh, so Moz is running hot, so I'll save the best to last. Bean, give us beans banger, and the around the grounds, which was. Widely successful there as well. Um, beans banger this week, mate. I um, I found profit on top, I think. I've taken the shorts about it. Um, I think for the sickos out there, take Genzai the Wolf, because I reckon it runs a bottler at $11. But, um, yeah, profit on top for me in a pretty, yeah, looks like it's basically got that race sewn up, mugs. And then best anywhere, um, a bit of commentary out of the stable for race six, number one, General Bow. Apparently it's been flying in track work. I'm um, being a Pretty big fan of this horse. Um, it's drawn wide in a race with a fair bit of speed, including Jigsaw that came out and went down at narrowly at Mooney Valley last start. Um, perfect first up record, getting 550. Prosty on board. Field whisperer. Big tick. Yep. Alrighty. Well, what is lock? I'm going to join Bean, uh, race for at Eagle Farm Profit. Uh, I think if it doesn't win, it'll be certainly beaten. It just, it's just better than these. Um, and as for around the grounds, there's, I'm sort of a little bit torn really, there's a horse that I'm really keen on is Mr. Mozart, uh, who I think is a, a quality three-year-old colt, but currently dual acceptor mugs out there listening, uh, Caulfield in the same race as General Bow, where it's a $21 chance, and it's in a benchmark race at Kembla, uh, race four, where it's $3.60 favourite, Tommy Berry doesn't know where it's going, he's, he's on in Sydney, so wait, the Hawks are obviously waiting for uh, uh, the horse to tell them, the horse to yeah, tell them. Of course. But one I, one I thought that I, I will go with, <laughs> just for the sole you know, mystery around where Mr. Mozart goes, is race five at uh, Caulfield, a horse called Elephant, uh, a Kiwi mm. horse, undefeated, four from four. Um, it's one by 1.3 lengths, two lengths, half a length, and half a length, and three lengths. 
Um, two times winner at the 1400, Frosty Lane on board from Barry 2, 370 with Sportsbet wins again. Yeah, big watch on that horse. Mm. Massive uh, spruik. Yeah, that's of, another good name too, Elephant. Yeah. Elephant. <laughs> well, just wait. <laughs> just wait. It just gets better. <laughs> Must have. Glorious Ruby, yeah. I reckon, is a real good thing. And I'm just sticking with what works. And that's race one. Moz's must-haves. Yeah. So, in form job. that for you last week? Yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't the, one, wasn't yeah, the wasn't must I I've, I've ventured into race two, I think yeah. it was. But it won. That's all that matters, mate. I'm, I'm on fire in this oh. segment. That's where <laughs> I shine. Uh, so, Glorious Ruby, Kilner on board. I think it's a, it's a good horse. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of cool names, and speaking of going back to Victoria, geez, they're going to love us down there. If you go to the last, there's a horse called Inferno. <laughs> it's a Singapore Group 1 winner. Um, I remember originally its plan was to come here for the Stradbroke last year, and I think they had some implications with quarantine and whatnot. But that's a Group 1 race, and now it's lining up in a listed race at Caulfield first up. So I think there's some... Some spring ambitions there. Frosty Lane on board as well. So he's, he's going to have a big day. He's going to all the internationals. Big. But it's yeah. it's eight from nine in its career. Yeah. Singapore form, I mean, who knows what that's like. <laughs> you can't, at least the Hong Kong form, you can sort of yeah, you can match up, up you know, team. in a sense. But Singapore is like its own little bubble there. So it's pretty it's pretty cool to see a horse A come here of, of one that, it was their best horse, put it that way. Well, they did that with... Um, Debt collector. Debt collector yep. Yeah. Uh, and that sports popped up and ran. Yeah, he didn't quite reach the heights that he no. reached in Singapore. But any price about it? Uh, so you're getting six bucks yeah, in the last there at Caulfield. So it been a bit of cash for it already. Again, they like Price elephant. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's uh, if it wins, I think the cult following will just be huge because it's yeah. just a ripper name. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm just happy back to back it on those bases, to be honest. You know, so that's the form, what really? Pretty much. Cool, cool names. Yep. Cool colours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> believe it too. Uh, well, look, Mugs, that's all from me. You boys got any inspo for the mugs out there? Yes, I do actually for mugs out there. Yesterday on Wednesday, we had a, um, there was one that um, I think Moz might have put his bet on and he's gone off to work. $2.60 on Vitesse Francaise in mm -hmm. the last Doombin. Lloyd and I, I don't think, had our bets on at that particular point in time, and it drifted like an absolute barge from $2.60 out to about, I think he paid three ninety on the tote in the end. Question for the mugs out there is, do you bet the drift? I jumped off, Lloydie stuck with and bet the drift. I was the mug, came in second or third, and these two lads got the chocolate. And so I took the $2.20. Yep. We'll put the... Um, We'll put the um, put the poll up there for whether you bet the drift or not, but just keen to hear what the followers think. There'd be some good stories around that too, yeah, I reckon. I reckon there. there would be some classics. We'll, uh, see yeah. if we can get something next week. Yep, yeah. cool. Yep, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll do me. Brew Cup on Saturday, I think. Uh, don't have a tip for you, but it's uh, one of the most picturesque racetracks in the world. There, so tune in. Watch Sky Racing on your sports better. That's it, not on the other one. Thanks, Mugs. Cheers, Bruce.